I think it's very exciting now that the combination of carboplatin and pemetrexed um, uh, with pemeluzumab was approved by the FDA. You know, it's a small trial, um, 130 patients. It's a randomized phase two. Uh, we don't yet know the biomarker distribution. Um, you know, PDL1 uh, for the patients who benefited or not. However, you know, as a practicing uh, oncologist and, and a researcher, I actually think it's nice that we have this tool available for our patients. The fact that the progression-free survival had a hazard ratio of 0.5, the updated um, survival that was presented here at the ASCO meeting uh, showed um, a hazard ratio 0.69, not significant, but trending in that direction. And most importantly, the toxicities. When you compare the toxicities, grade 3, 4, they're not dramatically different when you put the two drugs together. I think it's reasonable that we're using this and, and, and providing it to patients while we figure more things out. Certainly if we had an immune oncology IO, IO combination, meaning uh, two immune drugs and they were working together and we could prove that, we might want to use that first, uh, but we don't. Or if we had a targeted therapy immune oncology on, uh, combination, we would as well. But I think in this case, in the real world, many patients come in and you want to give them immunotherapy. In my practice and in my experience, the only patients who have had long-term survival with non-driver mutated uh, lung cancer are those who've gotten PD-1 or pd one inhibitors. So I want to get this into a patient as quickly as possible. If someone comes in and their pd one is low or even if it's zero, you know, and I can give them this drug, uh, a pembrolizumab with chemotherapy, and remember this trial is only for the non-squamous, so it's for a bit of a limited population, I want to do that because if I gave chemotherapy first, they might not do well and might never get to the immunotherapy. So I think, you know, our, our goal should always be to help more patients. And since it doesn't seem like we're hurting them in, the, in this, uh, these data that are released, I would definitely do this because there's a chance of uh, long-term benefit. The one caveat is there's a group, you know, that's pd one uh, high that maybe should get immunotherapy alone. Perhaps the chemotherapy even inhibits the long-term benefit. And all that needs to still be sorted out. But I'm very much in favor of this. I still want to do clinical trials and research and I offer those to patients at Yale. But if someone isn't a candidate, I have been talking to them about this combo. I had the privilege of uh, being involved in uh, Keynote uh, 021, uh, specifically Cohort G, which compared standard chemotherapy and non-squamous, non-small cell, uh, pemetrexin, carboplatin, to the combination of chemotherapy with pembrolizumab. And this was based on pre-existing phase one data that showed that that combination was quite well tolerated and that response rates irrespective of PDL1 level were north of 55-60%. Uh, and so I had the privilege of uh, presenting uh, the randomized phase 2 data at ESMO in October 2016 and uh, the results were quite favorable, even more favorable than I had anticipated. Uh, response rate for the triplet was 55, 56%, and that's being updated at uh, ASCO 2017 and has inched up further. The response rate for the control group was about 28 to 30%. Uh, Progression-free survival, uh, as we had seen in Keynote 024, was significantly higher. 13 months, the first time I've ever seen PFS actually penetrate that one-year barrier. And this was compared to 8.9 months for the control group, which frankly uh, outflanks uh, what we had seen historically. So that we can't impugn a benefit here based on a poorly performing control group. The control group essentially outpaced the historic control. Uh, to date, uh, there's been no significant difference in overall survival. Uh, but at ASCO 2017, the results have been updated, and in fact, here too, we are starting to see some separation in the survival curves. The one-year survival rate for the uh, three-drug combination was 76 percent, compared to 69 percent for the uh, control group, and the p-values dropped from 0.39 to 0.13. Now, again, it's a relatively small randomized phase two trial, just 120 patients. So I think it's asking a lot to actually see a survival advantage in such a relatively small uh, patient population, but still all of the uh, results are quite favorable. And as of May 2017, the FDA actually issued conditional approval, accelerated approval for the triplet combination in non-squamous, non-small cell independent of PDL1 status.